Good morning, everybody. This is Diggs. It's another beautiful day out here in the Pacific Northwest. And today we're going to be talking about some high level Tetris tricks to optimize your Tetris building. So let's go ahead and dig in. Now, I did hide my webcam just because we are going to be looking at the game and there are some things you need to see on the screen. The first thing we're going to talk about is this red exclamation mark. Now, if you didn't know, uh, you do get enhanced stats if you do have multiple stars in on your puzzles. So, for example, if all of your puzzles are three star and above, you'll notice there's three stars down here. You can go over here to completion stats applied and it will show you that because I have all of my puzzle pieces three stars, I am going to get accuracy plus 162. Now, if I had maybe all six stars, I would get accuracy plus 405. And these bonuses differ depending on the puzzle board. So this is something you are going to want to look at. And these are small things that you can change right now in order to give yourself more stats. If you're like me, what I was doing initially was just slotting in any puzzle piece that I could in order to solve the puzzle. So I would have a puzzle that looks like this, right? Where I have six star pieces, I have four star pieces, I have two star pieces, I have one star pieces, and they're all slotted in everywhere. And I'm not, I'm getting the completion bonus, but I'm not getting the two star, the three star, right? The things that really matter, like crit and critical hit rate resist. So as I've gotten more pieces and finished the boards, I started looking at how I can increase my star bonuses and what some of the optimal ways are to go about doing that. And one of the things you'll notice if you go to this board is sometimes you'll have these red exclamation marks uh, hovering over uh, your puzzles. And if you go in, the red exclamation mark is going to be on a piece that is a higher star level than a piece that is currently in the puzzle. So right now, I have a lot of one star pieces in this puzzle right here, and I have this one star piece here, but I have this two star piece right here. So what I can do is I can click and I can drag it over, and it actually has a replace feature, and all of a sudden, I have that two star place pieced in. And now that I have that piece placed in, I can come back here to combine, and I can take all of the orange pieces, combine them again, and get a two star puzzle block. Coming back to my equipment screen, I'm going to take a look to see, well, this two-star puzzle block probably, no surprise, can fit into another slot here. I'm going to grab this, I'm going to flip it over, and I'm going to slide it in. So this is kind of how you should be gearing up your puzzles towards the end game or towards the higher level play. Um, a lot of people may not even have all of the puzzle pieces they need for this, and puzzle pieces come naturally through gameplay. One of the best ways to get puzzle pieces is to play through the main story, because if you do play through the main story, you are going to get access to a certain area. I believe it's once you reach the snow area, uh, you are going to get access to, if I can find it here, uh, select three star Tetro puzzle selection packs, so that you can easily, and you get like three of these uh, from completing your alts up that far, which is, this is an easy way to get 15 three-star pieces. Um, this is one of the best ways to sort of start upgrading your builds and going from there. And one of the things that I did is I took all of the high star puzzle pieces out of all of my puzzles, and then I just started rebuilding my puzzles from the left to the right with the most optimal puzzle pieces that I could place in. Now, if you are wanting to go to the next level with this and go a little bit more complicated, a lot of you are probably familiar with the Puzzle Piece Builder webpage. And while I do really like that webpage, I do think there are some problems with it because each puzzle piece does actually have innate stats on it, right? And one of the things you'll notice is that purple blocks do have more stats than orange blocks and are worth more CP. And you'll notice that other pieces like the four straight give defense, which may be more valuable in the long run compared to something like, you know, HP or compared to potentially critical resist, right? So you do want to be specific in the pieces you set. 
One thing really to consider is the amount of accuracy you can get from purple blocks, from these L-shaped blocks in particular, because these L-shaped blocks give a lot of accuracy. So this is one of the really good ways to stock up on accuracy. And why are we talking about this? Well, I think a lot of times when we go to the puzzle builder, we don't take into effect or into account the actual stats that are on the pieces. We only focus on how we complete it the most efficiently. So there are a couple things to think about, and I'm interested to see what the global community comes up with here when you do think about completing puzzles in the most optimal way. And this is um, from a CN webpage, which I will put down in the description down below. Uh, but you can see that on their forums, they started to build together optimal builds regarding square blocks because square blocks do in fact give attack. Now, personally, I think because of the amount of accuracy that you get, you would probably want to use the L blocks more than the square block blocks, or you would want to use the defense because the amount of attack you get compared to the amount of accuracy you get um, is quite substantially different. So I do think puzzle pieces will be really good if you can find an optimal way to uh, configure the puzzles with the up and right L block or potentially the square blocks for attack. But you can see here they have it mapped out differently where they can fit in potentially three squares on future puzzles, four squares on the ghost right here, uh, two squares over here. There's just so many different ways you can see that they've gone through and they've kind of started optimizing how they can place their puzzles down. And it's one of those things I think we don't consider as new players. And it's one of those things that as we kind of transition into participating more towards end game content and trying to focus on these stats specifically to our characters, we are going to want to pay a little bit more attention to because it would be quite easy to, you know, run something like this over here, like this Doberman, where maybe instead of running, you know, so many only two squares, I could probably fit four squares in. Or over here, I have one square when I could commit two. Or we just saw with the ghost, I could get four squares in here. So converting pieces to both purple as well as trying to fit as many purple L shapes or up and right pieces as well as square pieces are going to really be the future for the puzzles. So I hope a lot of you guys kind of got something from this video because these are a lot of like advanced puzzle tips that I've kind of been focusing really hard in on over the last couple of days. And I think it's one of those things that a lot of people really tend to underestimate, particularly the accuracy aspect of the puzzle pieces. So Thank you so much for watching, everybody. If this did help you, please make sure to hit the subscribe button. And of course, I will catch you guys next time.